Hi, and today I think I'm going to talk about the projectile motion. And this is a, a motion that we need two components, and these two components are uh, independent. Um, so we are going to show you uh, some examples and how to solve this problem step by step. Okay, so first, let me give you an introduce. Uh, about the independent motions in two directions. Um, last class, we talked about a motion that has just uh, one direction, we call a linear motion. Linear motion said that if we have uh, an object and this object has a, a straight trajectory, that means it moves from A to place B, and the direction is only in one dimension and uh, um, the trajectory is a line. Then we have four equations to describe this motion. The four equations are including the variables called velocity, uh, final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration time, and displacement. So we have this five uh, parameters to describe this motion. And if we have these four equations, we know three parameters, we can solve the rest of two. But for a motion in two dimension, if we have a projectile motion, suppose we have object and this object has uh, a curved trajectory, then we can only use these four equations to do the calculation. We have to separate this motion in two orthogonal direction. So if this motion is in 2D, we are going to uh, build a coordinate, a condition coordinate. We have horizontal direction and the vertical direction. And each direction is independent. So if we have um, a two-dimensional motion in the x direction and the y direction, the motion are independent. So in the x direction, we still use this four equation if in the x direction we have a constant acceleration. So we have two components, x and the y. In the x, if the acceleration in the x direction is a constant, then we can use the four equation I list here. And the parameter, we have the displacement in the X direction. We have uh, initial velocity in the X direction. The vertical velocity, uh, hold on. The velocity in the X direction at any time. And we have, uh, time, and we have another thing that's acceleration in the x direction. So that means we use those four equations. If we know three parameters, then we can solve the rest of two. Let's play the same game in the y component. If in the y component, the acceleration is also a constant, and uh, it doesn't guarantee the ax equal to ay. Most of the time, these two are not equivalent. But we still have five parameters in the y component. We have the displacement in the y direction. We have initial velocity in the y direction. We have final velocity in the y direction at any time. And we have time. And we have acceleration in the y direction. Um, all the parameters are independent. So the X and the Y uh, don't have relationship. The initial velocity in each component also are independent. The final velocity are independent. The acceleration are independent. The only thing that these two direction can have a relationship is time. Okay, they share the same time. So how long does it take in the X direction 
equals how long does it take in the y direction? So time are the same. Time in x direction and y direction is same. Okay. Then in the y direction, we have the similar four equations. For example, we have Vy in the first equation, we can rewrite this equation in this way. We have the final velocity in the y direction equals the initial velocity in the y direction plus the acceleration in the y direction times t. Okay, we can call this 2.8 pi. Okay. This is the first equation. The second equation, we can also uh, replace x with y. We have displacement equal to the y0 plus initial velocity in the y direction times t plus one half acceleration in the y direction times t squared. Okay. And we call this 2.12 prime. The third equation we have the velocity in the y direction square equals initial velocity in the y direction square um, plus two times acceleration in the y direction times uh, y minus y zero. Okay, this is 2.13 prime. Then the last equation could be changed as um, the displacement in the y direction equals the average velocity in the x direction in the y direction, this is average velocity, times the duration. We can also rewrite this as one half the final velocity in the y direction plus the initial velocity in the y direction multiplied by time. Okay, this is 2.14 prime. So I just uh, change uh, the parameter. And you can find that when we talk about the x component, we have to use the parameter in the x direction. And when we talk about the parameter in the y component, then we only use the y component. So they are independent. The only thing that share in these two equations is the time. Okay, if you think this is very uh, abstract, I give you an example. For example, if I have a flat throwing motion, for example, there's a person and throw a ball and this ball is going to uh, move at the beginning with the uh, initial velocity in the x direction. Okay, this is uh, at time equal to zero. But when um, this ball is thrown away, the trajectory will be uh, parabolic until it hits the ground. Okay, this is ground. Okay. Let's take a look. Um, how far does it take uh, for this ball to fly, and how long does it take and for this ball until it hits the ground? So if we know the height at the throwing, if we know the height is h, and we know the initial velocity, then let's calculate the time. What do we have in this case? So to calculate the time, we have two methods. Two methods to calculate the time. The first method is 
to get the time from x component from x. The second method is from y component. So to get the time, uh, we need to know three parameters. So which direction do we know three parameters? Let's check in the x direction. In the x direction, we only know the vx, the initial velocity. And another parameter we know is the acceleration in the x direction. This is zero because there's no force on the horizontal direction. So the only force on the board is the gravity, but the gravity is in the y direction. So we have this relation, the x acceleration is zero, and we're still missing one parameter. So one parameter missing. So we cannot use x component to calculate the time. But in the y direction, let's see, we know the height, right? the height of h. And we know the initial velocity in the y direction because the initial velocity is only in the x component. So in the y component, the initial velocity is zero. Okay. And I also know the acceleration in the y direction. That's g. Ay is equal to the minus 9.8 meter per second square. And I can use g to label it. Okay. So we know three parameters in the y direction. Then we can solve time. Okay. Um, to solve the time, we need the equation that doesn't include the final velocity. So we pick up. Uh, we pick up the second equation, this one, 2.12. So that means the height is equivalent to the initial velocity times t mm -hmm. plus one half a t squared. Okay. The initial velocity in the y direction is zero. So this goes to zero and mm -hmm. a is g. So H is equivalent to one half GT square. Okay. GT square. Then the time could be solved. Time will be square root two H over G. Now we know the time. Then let's see how far um, does the uh, or travel in the x direction. So in the x direction, if we want to know the x displacement, we only need to use the velocity in the x direction, vx times the duration. Because the two directions share the same time. The time we have is square root two h over g. So the vx should be time by two h over g is the horizontal displacement for this board. So this one could be solved as initial velocity times square root two h over g. Okay, so let's take a look at the trajectory. We know that in the x direction, right here, in the x direction, we have the x speed times the time, the duration. Okay. In the y direction, we have uh, one half g delta t squared. Okay, this is uh, uh, coordinate as a function of time. Let me remove the delta. And we have these two equation. Then let's replace the g and we want to get the relation between y and x. Let's replace the g, uh, replace the time. The time from the first equation is x over vx. So we plug the time into the second equation. We get the y equals one half g. t squared is x over vx squared. So in this case, we get a result. The y is proportional to the x squared. So that's why the project, 
tail motion is a parabolic curve. Right? So if we I just draw curve as y and x, and I set the initial position is zero, then the projectile motion will be a parabolic curve. Y is proportional to x squared. Okay, let me give you a quick summary how to solve this problem. So we have two dimensions. First one, we have x and the y dimension component. And both x component and y components are independent. The only thing that they share is a time. So, but time is the same. So if you get time from one component, then you can use this time in the other component. So the time in the y direction is equivalent to the time in the x direction. This is the only thing that they share. The second one, in the x direction, because acceleration is zero in the projectile motion. So usually, usually the acceleration in the x direction is zero. So we only need to use one equation. That is the x displacement is equivalent to the initial velocity or the velocity in the x direction x direction times t. So this is only equation we need to use in the x direction because a acceleration is zero. And in the y direction, we have four equations. The four equations here, we use those four equations. Over here in the y direction, we use four linear motion equations. Four equations of linear motion. And we have some hidden conditions. The first one is the acceleration in the y direction is gravity, right? That's a minus 9.8 meter per second squared. This is very important. So this is no. And well, we need other two parameters. We need to know two more parameters. To solve uh, other parameters in the y component to solve the motion in y direction. So you can find that um, we just repeat the linear motion um, problem solving in the y direction. And in the x direction, we only have one equation. And this equation is uh, zero acceleration motion. So I think the X component is not difficult and the Y component is a linear motion with X constant acceleration. So uh, these are three steps we need to use to solve the projectile motion problems. And I think um, the homework can give us more practice. And let me review the homework. The first one, will be the flat throwing. Uh, you can see there's a person moving with a speed of V0 and the jump off a cliff with a running horizontal leap. And we have the figure on the right. And you can find that 
um, there is a ledge. The ledge has a 1.75 meter. So this could be treated as the X displacement. X displacement. And the height of this cliff is nine meter. So this is a displacement of Y. So this is what we have. And it says, the question is, how fast that this person should be uh, so that it doesn't um, hit the, the ledge. That means how far, how fast should this person jump so that the horizontal displacement is larger than 1.75 meter. Okay, this is a question. So let's see, we need to know uh, the V0. This is what we're going to look for. And if we want to know the V0, this is a component in the X direction, right? V0 is uh, the X component. So we need to use the equation in the x direction. In the x direction, we only have one equation, that is the displacement equals v0 multiplied by time. But the question is, we don't know the time. Time is unknown. So we want to solve the time. And we know the x direction and the y direction share the same time. So we're going to solve the time from the motion in y direction. Okay, in the y direction, we know the initial velocity in the y direction is zero because the uh, initial velocity is only in the x direction, it's horizontal. So in the vertical, the velocity is zero. And we have another um, parameter we know is the acceleration in the y direction negative 9.8 meter per second square. And also we know the displacement in the y direction is nine meter. So we know three parameters. If we know the three parameters, then we can solve the time. So we need the equation without final velocity. So let's use the equation 2.12 prime. Okay. So the 2.12 prime says, the displacement equals the v0 in the y direction times t plus one half a y square, a y t square. And let's see, initial velocity is zero and a is 9.8. So we have in the y direction because the direction goes down. So I use negative nine meter is negative nine meter equals one half 9.8 meter per second square t square. So we can solve the t is, and check the solution. Uh, the time is 1.36 seconds. Okay, so we already have the time. Let's go back to the first equation. Okay. We know the time and we know the x displacement is 1.75. So the velocity should equal x over time. That will be 1.75 meter over 1.36 seconds. So that means the velocity should be larger than 129 meter per second. So if the velocity is smaller than 129 meter per second, then the person will hit the ledge. Okay. So this is minimum velocity. Okay, so let's move on. Next question is, uh, a level ground, a 
on the level grounds it says a shell is fired with an initial velocity and this initial velocity has a magnitude of 40 meter per second and the angle above the horizontal is 60 degree and there's no air resistance so that means the acceleration in this motion is only equal to 9.8 it's only equal to 9.8 meter per second square it's only gravity in this motion right find the horizontal and the vertical components of the initial velocity okay let's see there is a level ground draw and the says there's a shell Ooh. Okay. with a uh, with a velocity. The velocity has a magnitude 40 meter per second and the degree, the angle between this velocity and the horizontal is 60 degree. Okay, so to get a horizontal component and a vertical component, let's use a formula. Okay, the Vx is there, let me see initial velocity because the initial velocity multiplied by cosine theta theta here is 60 degree and initial velocity in the y direction is initial velocity times sine theta theta is also 60 degree okay so the initial velocity is 40 meter per second then we multiply by cosine theta and sine theta then we get both x component and y component Okay, so I show you the result. The x component is 34 meter per second, and the y component is, uh, let me see, hold on. So in the horizontal direction, that's 20 meter per second, and the vertical component is 35 meter per second. Okay. So this is part A. Let's say part B. How long does it take the shell to reach its highest point? And let's draw the trajectory of the shell. So it rise and then reach the highest point, then drop down. Drop down. So we are looking for the height of the highest point. So when we talk about height, that's a calculation in the y direction. Right? There's a parameter in the y direction. So we have to looking for all the parameters we know in the y direction. So in part B, part B, this is a question about y direction motion. the maximum height and we are looking for the time okay time is what we're looking for let's see at the height of points we have some hidden parameter the first one is the final velocity at the highest point is zero and we already know the initial velocity right the initial velocity in the y direction is 35 meter per second and then we know the acceleration in the y direction is g, negative 9.8. So we can use a uh, equation to solve the time. That equation uh, shouldn't include the, uh, the displacement. So if there's no displacement, let's see, we're going to use the first equation, y component for the Velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus a t. This is the equation we're looking for, and we can solve the t. Right. When we solve the t, and we get the value. The value, let me see. Uh, the value of the time will be 3.5 seconds. Okay, this is part B. 
Part C, what's find the maximum height above the ground? So to look for the height, that's the displacement in the y direction, right? The displacement in the y direction, we already know four parameters in the y direction. So we only need an equation including the displacement. That's fine. So let's use uh, the equation v square, vy square equal to the initial velocity square in the y direction plus two times ay times y to solve the displacement. Okay. We know the acceleration, we know the final velocity and the initial velocity, so the displacement and is SC or will be 141 meter. Okay, that's a part C. Part D, how far from its firing point does the shell land? Okay, how far? How far means this is a displacement in the x direction. So in part D, let's looking for the parameter in x direction. How far? Okay, in the x direction, we only have one equation x equal to the velocity in the x direction times time t. Okay, t during the motion, let's see, will be the total time from the starting point to the ending point. And when the time we calculate here is the time uh, for the shell to reach the highest point. So when the, the shell reaches the highest point, it takes some time to drop down. And because this motion is symmetrical, so the time here is two times of this time. It's double, right? So we have initial velocity, that's a 20 meter per second times T. This T is 3.5 multiplied by two. Okay, so we have, uh, hold on, did I get it correct? And uh, this Y, I get the wrong number here. The displacement in the Y direction is 61, and displacement in the X direction is 140. Okay. The final equation, uh, the final question, let's see, part E, at its highest point, find the horizontal and the vertical component of its acceleration and the velocity. The acceleration at the highest point, wherever this shell is, the acceleration is a constant. It only has a vertical acceleration. And there's no horizontal acceleration. So for the acceleration, the x is zero and y is always equal to 9.8 meter per second squared. For the uh, velocity at the highest point, the y component is zero because it goes to the highest point and there's no uh, velocity in the y direction. In the x direction, the velocity is a constant. It doesn't change because the acceleration is zero. So the vx is equal to the vx initial, that's 20 meter per second. Okay, this is uh, a solution for this question. Let me move on. So there is a putter and release a shot. This shot takes some distance above the level ground, okay, above the level ground with a velocity of 12 meter per second and uh, 51 degree above the horizontal of some level above the ground. Okay, stand here and there's a projectile motion. The initial velocity is uh, 12 meter per second and with the angle that's of 51 degree. And let's say the trajectory will be like this. Uh, the shot hits the ground, 
zero eight second letter and ignore the air axis uh, resistance what are the components of short acceleration well in flight acceleration in the projectile motion are always equal to the gra gravity okay so the g is negative eight per second square in the y direction and the x direction is zero Remember this. Part B, what are the components of short velocity at the beginning and at the end of the trajectory? So let's see. At the beginning, uh, let's use the equation at the beginning. The initial velocity of x equal to the initial velocity cosine 51 degree. Initial velocity in the y direction is the magnitude of the initial velocity times sine 51 degree. Okay, so the result will be uh, how much is this? 7.5 meter per second. This is, uh, let me see, what's the y component? My component is 9.32 meter per second. Then at the end, at the end, the horizontal velocity doesn't change, right? Because there's no acceleration in the X uh, component. So X, X uh, velocity is a constant, it's always equal to. 7.5 meter per second. But in the y direction, there is acceleration and the value is 9.8. So at the end, the velocity in the y direction should be used the equation. This is equal to the uh, initial velocity in the y direction plus AT, right? A is uh, 9.8 minus 9.8. The time, we have is 2.08, 2.08 second. So we get a negative value that is negative 11 meter per second. Okay, this is part B. Part C, how far did she throw the shot horizontally? How far? This is a question in the X, Direction, right? Here, how far means is a displacement in x direction. The displacement is equal to the velocity in the x direction times the duration, right? So let's see the x um, component of the velocity is. 7.5, 7.5 meter per second is constant multiplied by duration 2.08 seconds. We get uh, the result is, let me check the solution. So that's 15.7 meter, meter, that's a displacement. Okay, part D. Part D is a question said, why does the expression for the R in the example 3.8 not give the correct answer for the part C? For the part C, we get the displacement equals 15.7 meter, okay? And for the uh, expression in the example 3.8, we have a horizontal range R, uh, apply for this equation. Okay, this equation says the initial velocity square times a sine two times of the angle over g. So let's do the calculation. You will find that the velocity, initial velocity, initial velocity, is the initial velocity. Uh, initial velocity is 12. Okay. Is 12. So we have R equal to 12 square multiplied by, by
by sine. Sine two times the angle, the angle is 51 over G, 9.8, okay? Then you will find that this value is smaller than the 15.7 meter. So why we cannot use this equation? Because in example 3.8, this is a uh, motion starting from the ground, then with a projectile motion, after several seconds, it reaches the ground. So the initial position and the final position, they are at the same level. Okay, they have the same height because the initial position and the final position height is the same. That means the y displacement is zero. Then we can use this range equation. But in this question, there is some level above. So this equation, this equation gives you expression from here at the same level to here. That equation gives you the R is from starting point to the ending point, the ending point should have the same level. But because there is some height for the shot to fly further, so that means we need to calculate this range. So that means we get a larger number. The displacement is larger than the than this expression. Okay, so this is uh, part D and part E. Part E, how high was the shot above the ground when she released it? How high? How high means this is a question asking you the displacement in the y direction. Part E, to get the the height, we know the final velocity is zero, right? Because height point, there's no velocity. If there's no velocity, let's see, we have the initial velocity, that's 9.32, and we know the gravitational acceleration, and we know the final velocity is zero. So we're going to solve the height. We don't need an equation with time, right? So, Equation will be v square equal to v zero square in the y direction plus two a y. Then this is zero, and we can solve the y. The displacement will be m c one point eighty one meter. The part e. Okay, final question. Draw the xt, yt, vxt, and vyt graph. The xt, let's see, xt, we have the equation x as a function of t is a linear equation. So xt will be draw all the diagram t, y, and v x, t, v, y, t. Okay, for the first one, the x, t is a linear motion. So we have a linear line start from zero point and increase. Okay, y, t, y, t, this is a projectile motion and we have the relation between the displacement and the time is y equal to uh, v zero y times t plus one half a t square. Okay, this is a projectile motion, so it should start from some position. It sets some level above. Okay, so it starts from some place and reach the highest point, then drop down, hit the ground. 
This is a YT diagram. And in the velocity, X direction is a constant. So it is a flat line. But for the Y direction, there is a negative acceleration in the vertical direction. So the velocity decreases linearly. We have Vy equal to V initial Y plus AT. A is negative value. So we have linear drop line. Okay, so we have one more question. So it says the fireman used a high pressure force to shoot a stream of water to a burning building. The water was speed has a speed of this one. It leaves the end of horse and then exhibits the projectile motion. The fireman adjusts the angle of the elevation alpha above the horizontal until it takes three seconds to reach the building 45 meters away. Ignore the air resistance, assume the end of the horse is uh, ground level, is at the ground level, and find the, the angle. Okay, so it said the fireman is on the ground, it's a building. Okay. Uh, the water stream looks like this. And it says it takes three seconds and the 45 meter this is X displacement, this is time to reach the building. So let's find the angle alpha. Let's see. We know the water speed is 25 meter per second. That's the total velocity. And to find the angle, we need to know either y component or x component of the velocity. So from the condition we know, it takes three seconds to go 45 meters away. So we can solve the x component of the velocity. That will be the x uh, displacement over time. That will be 15 meters per second. That's the x component. Then the x component will give us the cosine alpha. That's X component over Y. Okay, so we get the alpha. Let's check the solution. The alpha will be uh, 53 degree. This is the uh, first question. Second question, find the speed of X and acceleration of the water at the highest point. At the highest point, the speed in the horizontal direction is a constant, it's the same, so it's still 15 meters per second, and there's only horizontal speed. And in the vertical speed, that's zero. That's the highest point. And for the acceleration, in the horizontal acceleration, there's no acceleration, so that's zero. But the vertical acceleration, that's 9.8 meter per second. Okay. Part C, last part. How high above the ground does water strike the building? Okay, we are going to find the height from this point to the ground. So this is a question asking you to calculate the Y displacement. Okay, let's see. The y displacement and is the parameter we're looking for. And we know the time is three seconds. We know the acceleration is 9.8 meter per second squared. And what else do we know? We know the initial velocity, right? The initial velocity in the y direction equals the 25 meter per second is the total velocity times sine alpha. Alpha is 53 meter, uh, 53 degree. So we get the Vy uh, initial. Okay, so Vy initial, let me see what's the Vy initial. That's the 25 sine uh, 53 degree. Okay, 
this is a white. And then let's see, we need an equation including this four parameter. So we don't need, uh, what do we don't need? Let's see. We're looking for the displacement. So we need an equation doesn't have the final velocity. If there's no final velocity, we have this equation displacement, use y, displacement equals initial velocity times t plus one half a t squared. Okay, then we get the height. The height will be, uh, let me see, will be 15.9 meter. Then also we need to know how fast it's moving just before it hits the building. Okay, we need to know the velocity, final velocity, y. We're going to use the equation that initial velocity of y plus a t. a is in the y direction. Then we get the final velocity, negative 9.41 meter per second. And the negative means the velocity goes down. Velocity of y goes down. And at the hitting point, the horizontal velocity is still 15 meter per second. This is 9.41 meter per second. So the total velocity is equal to the total velocity. Let me use a parallelogram uh, rule that will be the square root 15 square plus 9.41 square. So we have the total velocity before it hits the building is 17.7 .7 meter per second. Okay, so that's the solution for the homework three. I think uh, the strategy to solve this problem is to figure out uh, what's the question ask you. Is that in the X direction or is that in the Y direction? If this is the x direction component, then we only need to figure out all the parameters in the x direction and what we know and what we don't know. And if we ask you to calculate a parameter in the y direction, then we only need to find the y component. Okay, they are independent. And the only thing that they share is the time. Okay, so finally, I want to say thank you for uh, watching this video. And today is uh, Chinese New Year. Uh, in the 2021, this is the year of walks. In the walks, um, we have some uh, re resolution. And the meaning for the walks is uh, working hard for the, for the whole, whole year and be the best. So this is my wish to everybody in the year of walks.